Hello and welcome to a brand new series here on Sim Broadcasts, the Kesav Mods Cup 2022, a series that's been around in Live for Speed for a long time, um, but you know, it's lesser known to some people and uh, probably because it's starting at quarter past nine UTC. It's a bit of a late one for us here, Zhavko. One second, we will just get Zdravko uh, up on the microphones here. Uh, Zdravko, welcome along to Kesav 2022. Hello, good evening. Yeah, so uh, this series is a bit late for people from Europe that work and have to get up early, uh, such as myself, but uh, it's a popular one. Uh, People like to race it, and uh, it's uh, much better suited for all the American and South American drivers because uh, it just starts in a better time frame for them. Absolutely, um, we're glad to be here. We're happy to be uh, supporting Kesav and, and, and broadcasting this race, which is using the Formula 60 mod in Live for Speed at South City Chicane Route. Um, a very, very popular track but we haven't broadcast this as a Jaco since we we think about uh, late 2020 so it's been a long time since we've seen south city chicane route we've we've done reverse plenty of times but not uh, the chicane route um the mods cup by kesav is going to be five rounds long there's going to be round one here today uh rockingham issc will be next uh sorry next month in march kyoto ring north in april rockingham historic in may and Blackwood GP in June. And every single round will use a different modded car. Today we're using the Formula 60 uh, mod, which I will show you right now. Um, it's one of my favorite looking uh, mods in, in Live for Speed at the moment uh, by Facu 30, uh, 23, sorry. A 1.3 liter flat four rear wheel drive car based on the Formula V, a vintage car, uh, pretty much known to anyone in single seater racing these days. Um, 66 brake horsepower, so not a lot of power, but it only weighs 406 kilograms of Dravco. So a lot of fun around the tight and twisty turns of South City. Yeah, it, to me, it looks like uh, a much more fun and improved MRT. Yeah, but almost uh, based on a Formula student car almost, but uh, yeah. Yeah, I wonder, I wonder if it will be as handy as uh, the car that it's based on. It's a Formula V from iRacing. Uh, I don't know if uh, our viewers have tried it, but it can bite you in the ass when you're braking for the turns. That's my experience from it. Well, we have cars on track. And uh, to remind you, this is not a 60-minute qualifying session. This is a uh, one-shot qualifying session, which a lot of series in LFS use uh, in pickup racing and stuff like that. So all of these drivers have pre-qualified. They've set a time, and there are two divisions, uh, which means that we have about 20 cars in Division 1 and 20 cars in Division 2. We are broadcasting Division 1 of the championship. So uh, the 20-odd uh, cars who set faster qualifying times than the second 20. Um, so let's have a look at the track for those who do not know what uh, SO6 looks like in the speed. That is South City Chicane Route. Here it is. No, that is the car. Uh, my mistake. Uh, here is the track. We have um, 2.9 kilometers or 1.8 miles of the South City Borough Chicane Route. 
um, with 20 minutes ish of qualifying, followed by a 30 lap race. With one mandatory pit stop, Javko, uh, these guys have got to bring the Formula V inspired um, Formula 60 into pit lane at least once during the race. Yeah, uh, th this opens up a bit of possibilities for strategic calls. But with this track and this car, it will be very important to keep the speed up. The car is not very powerful, so every every kilometer that you can keep up in the turns will help you in the straights. And there are uh, three big straights on this uh, on this track, alongside with a very fast. A very fast chicane. It's a South City chicane route, so yeah, it's only it based that it has a chicane. Yeah, it's um, it's not that much of an event as we get the first time on the board uh, set by Mitsu here uh, in this session. Um, a respectable one minute twenty five zero three, and uh, yeah, that's our first time in the session, Javko. Um, we've got a few more cars circulating trying to set some uh, times, but all these drivers will be killed out. Uh, sorry, uh, called out. Um, one by one, basically, to set their lap times uh, in the session. Well, I gotta agree that it is the best way to run qualifying. Everybody gets a clear track, and it's uh, only a driver's talent that differentiates the times from each other. Yeah, one shot qualifying means that you you don't have any other opportunities to improve. You you get one shot, you get one out lap, and one flying lap, and that is it. That is all the time that you get to set your laps. Uh, here we're watching uh, Gavidio going round, uh, doing some front tire warming. Now I think we're going to see a lot of that because on your flying lap in a uh, of of well in a Formula car, you really need heat in all four tires, and it's really difficult to get heat in the front tires of a very very light single seater to drive. Yeah, what they're doing is aggressively turning while having throttles to just force the tire to slide. That was a bit too the, much, the... I think. Yeah, that's <laughs> a bit much. Uh, well, I guess if, if the organization doesn't have any rules on the allowed tire hitting, uh, everything is fair game, as long as you don't interfere with other cars. But yeah, I guess that front tires are bigger problem than the rears for this car. Absolutely. The times are coming in thick and fast. Uh, here we have Furtive Junior Rags is on a lap. Uh, he's just coming up to the uh, the little chicane we have here. Uh, really tricky in, in faster Formula cars. It's less of an event, as I mentioned before, in this, but still difficult. And in a, in a tricky car like this, you really have to nail each of those apexes because you can give up so much time if your chicane is slow. Final corner then, or second to last corner for Rags as he heads out onto the... Uh, start finish straight there's a bit of a kink and again it's not going to be an event in this car but this is a fantastic little open wheeler mod that's been created by facu 23 and live for speed um get a hold of an lfs f3 license and uh, and uh, try this car out here comes rags to the line uh, at which point he will disappear into the abyss but he will leave us with a lap time that is currently provisional pole oh that's a nice that was a nice lap before that, the difference between first and second in quality was one hundredth of a second. So that's uh, also close qualifying. Yeah, another thing about uh, Kasav, it's, it is one that isn't as known to, obviously, some of us in, in Europe who, who are thinking about going to bed about this time of night. Um, you know, it's, but, but this series has survived on, it's endured. And of course, we have a lot of the South American audience uh, involved and that's great to see and uh, there aren't as many series these days that cater to that time zone so it's nice to be up a little bit later in the evening broadcasting something a little bit different Jocko. i'm really really enjoying qualifying already and we haven't even got to the racing yet seven times here comes gavilio up to the line at which point he will disappear too i think they're using an insim here today to manage the qualifying session which is a bit unusual but you know that's a decent bit of infrastructure for uh, the series and he goes p2 with that lap well to me it looks awesome there uh, I mean, congratulations to the guy that programmed the insane because they have everything automated. Uh, in my team, we have friends for that. <laughs> yeah, you have a very <laughs> yeah, manual but, approach but, at Fragmaster. But here they have everything automated. So well, maybe that, you need to write an email. Thing. You need to write an email. 
Here's oh. Neon, who I think is uh, responsible, in fact, for that. Uh, LCR Neon, he, is, uh, he got in touch with us, actually, about broadcasting the uh, opener, Kestav opener, uh, Mods Cup opener. Um, and he's on a lap, I think. And uh, we will see what he posts in a minute. His split time was 40.74, and all his god is uh, just going straight to the finish. Let's see the time. He P7. goes 7. Yeah, and system immediately spawns him into the pit stop. For our regular audience, there are only a few names on this list so far who are uh, known, but uh, here we are. We have um, Team America's Vinzu coming across the line. Uh, we haven't seen him around much, but he's here in Kesav, and he crosses the line in P3. We've also got Vitalitas Lugutskas circulating somewhere. Um, I believe he's about... Well, he's on a lap, I think, but uh, here we go. Uh, Vanilla for LRT. He's just started a lap, actually using the, uh, the default livery, which is quite a nice one, um, not least because our logo's on it, uh, I think, which is quite a nice little touch. Um, but yes, we have 13 qualifying times. It's currently the Furtive Junior team leading, uh, well, P1 and P2 ahead of Furtive Racing, the, I guess the, the big sister team, uh, Zdravko. Yeah, and uh, considering the drivers that we know, I see that Absis is also on the track. Mm -hmm. Yep, he's here. So it, it's a good field. It's a good field and... Uh, yeah, I guess that some people from Europe don't want to sleep early, <laughs> so they are loving this. They want more TV time. That's exactly what it is. Uh, Vanilla makes a very nice route through the chicane as Vitalis Lugutskas goes on pole, a provisional pole with a 1 minute 23.71. Um, so yeah, he's uh, he's pretty handy already in the Formula V. 0.28 seconds quicker than the fastest fort, uh, furtive junior racer. Here comes Vanilla underneath the overpass, which is kind of the pit entry road here on SO6. And up to start finish, let's see what he can manage. Four cars to go in the qualifying session, so it looks like we're going to have about uh, 20 runners, as we predicted. And uh, Benella goes P3. That's a good lap. Uh, nice, nice tight field, so the, oh, it's this will be, be a great race, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so even though we have a smallish grid, because of course this is two divisions of racing, there's another server, another entire server of racers happening uh, in Kesau. So yeah, again, if you've seen the name Kesau around, but you haven't driven in it, then, well, take a look. This is a this is a series you should get behind because, well, we're enjoying it already. This little Formula Formula 60 car looks amazing fun. It's it's not the fastest, but it's going to provide some brilliant action, I think, as Upsass for Born to Race comes across the line. Can he challenge Vitalitas as he has in RTFR? Yes, he can. Close. Look at that. That's awesome. Yeah, so I think that having having road super tires on this car really, really brings it to life in turns. And that is so, all about qualifiers. There are our times. 19 qualifiers have set times, and we will get a rundown of the full order as the drivers enter the track for uh, a little bit of a warm-up. So we don't have much time here to drive go. We've got to get the qualifying results uh, read out. And these are the qualifying results for um, the Division 1 of Round 1 of the Kesav Mods Cup 2022. It is Born to Race Upsass on pole, followed by Vitalis Lugutskas. These two are battling each other hard in RTFR at the moment, our other regular championship series that we're broadcasting on Tuesdays. Uh, they take up the front row. Then we've got Furtive Racing Leo, followed by uh, Furtive Junior Vec. Vanilla is the teamless driver in P number... No, sorry, he's for LRT. My mistake. Sorry to him. His teammate also joins him on, on the third row. That is... Uh, Lia, uh, sorry, Lau. Then we've got Rags and Maxis on the fourth row. Uh, Minas Senau on uh, in, on row five, alongside Team America's Vinzu, Pablo Gavillo, Quintella, Mitsu, Neon, uh, Talibasi, Wally, Gonza, and Leandro. Nine one one are our nineteen qualifiers for this race. Uh, I can't wait, Javko. This was worth waiting for. Yeah, whole field in two seconds. Yeah, and, fantastic. Uh, we gotta consider that it's only one hot lap, so. Yeah. Any mistakes made can be repaired in the quality. So this would be a close race. 
Yeah, it will be absolutely awesome. Okay, so 2.9 kilometers, 1.8 mile, South City Chicane route. We have 30 laps of racing with a mandatory pit stop. So not only do the drivers have to keep it out of the barriers, they have to navigate the tricky pit lane here. Uh, they don't have to do any work in their pit stop. They just have to pull up and drive out again. Here we go then for the start. Uh, this is going to be interesting. We have two uh, veterans of sim racing on the front row and a somewhat unknown field for the rest of uh, for, for, for us here at Sim Broadcasts. Obviously, we uh, we know about uh, a lot of the drivers, but we haven't seen them race for a while. Here come the lights for a totally new series to us. Sit back and enjoy as Upsas and Lugutskas drive away. No smoke. There's not a lot of power in this car, of course. And there go our 19, or now 21 starters I see here. So a few late joiners as we blast our way down to uh, turn one. And it's a good lead already for Upsas. Yeah, Leo got a good start behind Laguskas. He goes a bit wider into turn one, maybe tries to get a better exit speed. Yeah, he will, he will go alongside. So that's a good start for Leo. Yeah, Leo and is top absolutely three have rapid. Breaking away a bit. Yeah, Leo is rapid in, in, in any car, so uh, he's going to give our, our two Roni's Tuesday Fun Race uh, competitors. We've got side-by-side -side action all the way down this field. Uh, loads and loads of side-by-side -side action way down the field. Upsas has definitely got a breakaway. Lugutskas and Leo still side-by-side. Lugutskas trying to go around the outside. He's going to be on the inside for the first part of the chicane, and Leo will have to settle in behind. Let's go on board. We've got some fantastic onboard cameras for you tonight as we see how close the margins are as they come through uh, the uh, chicane with these open wheel cars. It was a great move from Laguskas to keep it, keep it on the outside. Yeah, we've Just had a bit of a there. crash at the back. Sorry, we've had a crash. Uh, Wally's been in the wall hard and uh, has managed to get going again. Um, sorry, I interrupted the traffic. What have you seen? Uh, I'm just lost by the irony that Mr. Wally has seen the wall. All right. Yeah, I see that. I'm with you. Yeah. So Laguskas uh, went for that high risk pass on the outside and he made it work. And then through the chicane, Leo couldn't find a way through. So, but that has allowed Absis to run away a bit. So Max we'll is, see how it works. Max is here side by side with Pablo Quintella behind side by side with the uh, with Neon as they go a little bit sideways as we, they come out of the first hairpin here. And it's going to be a long drag race. You're going to have to find a partner to pull you down this straight. There is not a lot of speed in this Formula 60 car. And um, who is that pulling out of the slipstream? I think that is Pablo. Is it not? No, it is. That uh, is Quintella. Quintella. And Pablo behind him. Yep. Oh, is it oh. wide? Oh, bit of contact as we go into yeah. the chicane. That's not going to be good. There's, this is going to be a bit of a uh, pinch point, and everyone manages to get into a single file, but there's contact. Huge contact. Max is in the wall, and that's going to be cars uh, repairing. Oh, goodness me. As um, Who was that spearing back across the track? Uh, couldn't quite work it out. I think it was Mitsua has spectated. We've got a few more uh, casualties of that one, but that was a, just a huge pileup caused by a, a, a tap on the rear wheel. Uh, which was a little bit uh, cheeky. You don't want to tap the wheel there. Maxis has gone for an early pit stop as the Gutskas has been passed to Dravko by Leo as we head on to lap three. Yeah, Leo Leo, Leo fired up his rears faster than the Gutskas. I was, I was also uh, watching back on the crash. I think that Pablo went into the bag of Maxis on the okay. exit of Chicane. Yeah, it looked and like that. And that, that, that uh, put Maxis into the wall. And when you have a car uh, across the track, as Laguskas goes for the repass on the inside. So when you have the car across the track on the exit of Chicane, the cars going there can do much. No, no, you can't. You can't put a nose in at the exit of the Chicane. So yeah, Pablo will get a telling off from a lot of the drivers there. It caused a big accident on the exit of the Chicane. Um, so, uh, but yes, um, Pedro's teammate, Leo, doing a good job out front, battling hard with Vitalis Lugutskas, but this is letting Upsas get away, and uh, Vec, Vanilla, and uh, Lau behind trying to catch up. So Lugutskas had a big understeer moment on the exit of last turn, and that has allowed Leo to go on the inside and through. 
Let's see if Laguskas will go for a draft to the turn one. Yeah, he's not currently t uh, tucking in behind. He now decides to tuck in behind. He doesn't have uh, the legs on the straight. And uh, yeah, like you said, maybe he'll go for a send as he's beginning to close up now. Uh, lifted initially. So maybe he's just going to sit in behind for now and uh, try it down the straight at the back instead. And Upsis up just did a fast slap. He's into 23 so already. That's only two tenths of qualifying pace. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, everyone, for joining us. Uh, if you're from Europe, then this is a good effort, staying up this late. But everyone else, uh, thanks a lot for joining us for round one of the Kesav Mods Cup 2021. We've got a battle further down uh, between Tali uh, Talabasi and Neon. Sorry, Hernan. This is Furtive Junior Hernan on the uh, on the outside then, trying to make this work. And, uh, yeah, you can hold it around the outside here in the Formula 60, apparently. And... That's just another pinch point. Another pinch point, and that is Gonza, who's gone straight into the back of uh, Hernan there. At the front, now Laguskas is the one with better exit out of the penultimate turn. And he goes into draft zone and overtakes Leo into turn one. All this is helping Apsis a lot. Apsis just posted 1.10.23.6. That's qualifying pace already. Yeah, Upsas is in another league. He uh, he seems to take well to these mod cars. I mean, the, the thing is, in Live for Speed, this is a, the mods is a massive, massive shake-up because uh, everybody has had years and years and years to get used to the base cars in Live for Speed. And now mods have come along. It's a completely different ball game. Who can adapt the best to a brand new car with... Um, suspension, tires, an engine, and everything else, all the physics put together by a community member. You know, it's, it's some, some of these people have, have got their head screwed on and they're basing the, the uh, characteristics on real cars, but it's still a fine-tuned process. Um, you know, it's, it's going to be hard to get up to speed quickly with one of these cars. And Upsas is doing a great job here in the Formula 60. Yeah, I, I've been in the same team as Upsas and Laguskas before, and uh, for Upsas, Everything I, I can say is like this. He was able to just join up to the race 10 minutes before start of the race. Got a setup. He needed like two free laps and he was on the pace already. He's so fast. He's so quick learner. I know for one race I trained like whole week. This guy shows up. Beats my, beats my timing quality in free laps. Yeah, those, those those sorts of people are annoying, aren't they? As Lugutska steals away the fastest lap, breaks away from Leo slightly now, and sets his sights on the back of that maroon uh, car of Born to Race Upsas up ahead. We have Gonza in the pit lane. Presumably will take a bit of damage repair after the collision he had. Hernan also coming into the pit lane. I guess he will take a long stop too. Oh no, he doesn't actually doesn't decide to repair any damage 1.3 seconds stop and he'll be on his way so he's actually jumped gonza who was involved in that incident with him in fact gonza was the cause of the incident he was in and retakes the place so yep a little bit of karma there yeah hernan actually doesn't have that much damage yeah it's so possible he avoided okay. the wall actually yeah but i think her um i think uh, gonza may have slapped the wall and may have caused himself some uh, damage Wally and Leandro side by side coming into the chicane route section. I guess this is the point of the lap where the uh, the configuration got its name. And again, we see another bit of a pinch point. We should not turn to people when they are driving through this section because there's always collisions when they're side by side. Uh, that was Leandro going sideways, uh, the furtive junior racer. Yeah, I think Leandro maybe took a bit too tight line on Wally. You, you gotta allow for some uh, racing space there in that turn. Uh, here we have Lau going for a, a move. Oh, he's trying to go for a move. He's trying to line up Vanilla. He's lifting off, but he's probably going to line him up out of the hairpin and try and do him down the straight, which is where we've seen a lot of drivers uh, getting at it. The Gutskas is still under a second away from Upsas, so he's not not uh, he's not getting away as Upsas at the moment. But Leo, Leo is dropping back eight tenths now. The gap as Lau now trying to jump into the slipstream. Is he? No, he's not. He's not taking the slipstream yet. That is an unusual uh, place to position his car. Uh, to be fair, I don't understand why yeah. he doesn't want to take the draft. 
We have seen before the draft is strong enough. He's lifting now. Yeah, so falls in he's, behind. Yeah, he's happy to be behind Bonilla, I guess. I mean, it all depends what uh, what their goal is. If they want to be closer to the leaders, it it won't make them any faster if they start to fight. The steering wheel is unusually large. Uh, I just want to make that observation uh, in the Formula 60. This is a big wheel for such a small car. But anyway. Yeah, I mean, props to the virtual driver for fitting his hands there. Not a lot of space. <laughs> no, you get a lot of knuckle dusting on those uh, side pods there. As um, the gap there has opened up quite considerably and Benilla has managed to pull a little bit of a gap now uh, yeah, to but try and made, close up to Vec. That made Rakes interested in Laio. Because as Laio lifted to not be too close to Bonilla, Rakes came knocking to his door. Oh, he almost hit the wall on the exit there. And that cost him the chance to get into the slipstream. Uh, that was a, a tiny mistake on the apex that let his car bleed wide. And uh, the first turn is dangerous there because the wall goes back to the racing track. And if you don't have the grip to steer in, you have the wall to correct your car and it will hurt. Oops, house has opened the gap slightly. Two tenths over the last couple of laps, so those two are moving apart slightly, but, you know, it's a long race. We're only eight laps in as uh, Rags goes very sideways, getting the rear out on the car and into the pit lane straight away. He keeps a, a tight line on the inside. Didn't I guess that's a tactical. He didn't want to get into a battle with uh, Lyle. Well, I would say I would say he messed up that turn, right? And <laughs> yeah, a in, little this bit. Car, like in this car, if you do lose the speed, you're better off just uh, maybe going into the pits and not lose that much speed. Because otherwise you have to uh, you have to run with that speed penalty for the whole straight. Here we're watching Minasena, who's just uh, got past uh, Lao. Uh, sorry, um, who did he get past? He got past somebody who went to the pit lane. Rakes. Past Rakes, yeah, yeah Rakes pit it. Here's Vinzu. Vinzu, uh, a name that we see more commonly on the rest of our broadcasts in endurance racing, actually, with the Team America team. Uh, a few of them here, Wally, uh, Talabasi and Vinzu, and probably some other of this team in the Division 2 as well. Oh, as we see, Lugutskas has crashed and he's gone. So we, we, we got him on camera just as he messed up the chicane. An unusual, unforced error from Vitalis Lugutskas. You do not see that very often. And uh, we almost didn't see it at all because he was straight out of the race because he didn't want to collect uh, Leo, the guts cast, out. Oh, that's a shame. And that's probably a big grin on Abs's face. Yeah, I mean, uh, it, it's a tricky chicane. It's it's not a fast car, but it's, it's a tricky chicane, and these these tyres are grip-limited. If you get a small amount of oversteer, it's remarkably difficult to catch it when you're on the edge. Um, and the Gutskas has been caught out in an unusual error there, and that gives Leo P2, and it promotes Furtive Junior Racing uh, Vec up to P3. Four seconds off, though, so the, the battle for the lead is between Leo, really, and Upsas. But Leo, we've seen how quick he can be. He is absolutely rapid when he turns his mind to uh, anything, really. And uh, if anyone can challenge Upsas now, it is him. But the problem, the problem I see with the chicane, uh, this car, this car alongside with Road Supers, it has, it has soft suspension and a huge travel in the suspension, and and in the chicane there is a bump in the road, so the car can get nervous, and there's not a lot of space to catch the car if it does step out. True. So that's probably what ca caught uh, Laguskas out. Yeah, it's got a very small footprint, the Formula 60. Um, very wide, but uh, in, in relation to the, the overall size of the car. And those those, those um, track rods do stick out quite a way. Uh, you have to judge your 
lines to perfection. And yet, yeah, the chicane is certainly a pinch point. The good scan's just caught out. Upsass, though, so far, so good. But the gap is coming down ever so slightly to Leo. In fact, not so ever so slightly. Three tenths on that lap. Three tenths this lap, yeah. yeah. So, what I notice looking at those two cars is that Leo is definitely running lower pressure on his tires. That makes his car a bit slower in the straight line uh, and a, a bit tiny bit faster in the corners but it might it might be a factor later in the race if Absa's tires cool off. There's a battle lower down here. Uh, Leandro had a bad exit, we think, and that has allowed uh, CHV to catch up for Argentina Turismo around the outside, and that will be job done into the hairpin if he can keep it there. And uh, yeah, so another place lost for Leandro. Uh, Leandro taking a wide line, maybe trying to set up a run. I don't think that's quite going to work. That was quite wide. It will. I oh, think, will it? I, I okay. think he's close enough. I think it's worth. He stays in the draft. Wow, that was remarkable. I mean, that, that's a good strategy. Just just go for the corner exit. Yeah, it was a very wide entry. It looked it looked way too wide, and uh, well, CHV's just opened up the inside. We do know yeah, that the outside can work, works. but uh, we've seen collisions as well. Hopefully, this is clean. Eesh. <laughs> it was quite close. Yeah, Leandro did that. He did a tiny move at the apex that basically disallowed CHV to go on the outside. He, he kind of bleed the car out. Uh, I mean, it's perfectly fair. He had a, he had an overlap, so he was allowed to do it. It's a good racing move, but CFG is still on his tail. And still in the draft zone. So this will be fight. Oh, that is Gonza's gone round. So Gonza's had a bit of an issue again in, in the one place where we keep seeing issues in this little chicane. He's still sat there. Um, and look at the nose. Is the nose slightly damaged on Gavillo's car there? Yes, it is. There's a lot of damage on the front of this car. So potentially a pit stop in, in order if there's any suspension damage. Um, but yeah, it looks like the back three have had a coming together again. And uh, Gonza is the one that's fallen out of uh, place because of it. So, as we head on to lap number 13 of 30, it is Upsass from Born to Race leading Furtive Racing's Leo by just under two seconds. Leo has turned up the wick, so Dravco reckons he's got lower pressures, uh, which could explain the um, the closing gap with the uh, the tyres up to temperature. Then we've got Vec occupying the third place position on the provisional podium, uh, but it's close. We do have a battle for third, really, because Benilla is only a second and a half behind. Um, Lao on P5 for LCT, LCR Minisenal in P6, Vinzi for Team America in P7, Neon for LCR in P8, uh, Talibati for Team America P9, and Rags for Furtive Racing, having done his pit stop in P10. So that's... is it Furtive Racing or Furtive Junior? Yeah, what... what? Uh, what I see, it's interesting, uh, it looks like some drivers change teams lately. Because okay. I, I remember Rakes being in different team, I think. No, oh, he possibly used a different team name for uh, an endurance race, maybe? As we, leave, we yeah. lose Gonza from the race. Wally is trying to go around the outside of Rags. Wally's caught up to the back of Rags quite Whoa! quickly. And another bit of an incident. Oh my That's going to send Rags wide into the wall. Nope, he keeps it out. But yeah, that is definitely a difficult corner for the drivers in the Formula, in the Formula 60. The rear just steps out. So yeah. I would say this is a good more than realistic because Formula V... Yeah, uh, because Formula V says the... Uh, does the same thing on braking and downshifting. So great job by mode creator and drivers just has to have to deal with it. Nothing yeah. else. I think that just going going to the downshift a bit later is probably helping. Yeah, an important thing about mods and, and the, the, the art in it is that you have to make it line up with the real car and the characteristics of the real car. Obviously Liverspeed can help a lot about that. It's it has a, a you know 
fantastic physics engine that does a lot of the work for you but fine tuning the handling of a car is not easy um, and yeah FACU 23 take a bow this is fantastic stuff as Upsass is coming up against traffic uh, wee, you don't want that you don't want a car weaving around in front of you Upsass trying to navigate this back marker does so but yeah <laughs> unsettled maybe slightly this this race is making us do funny noises I like it I always do funny noises yeah uh, Upsass had awesome slide out of the last turn uh, I mean, it looked like this car has 500 horsepower, not 50. <laughs> yeah, we need to we need to put this this uh, race on on uh, twice speed, and then that slide would actually look like it should. Yeah, he yeah. lost three tenths to Leo in that sector alone. Mm -hmm. It really it really does matter where you where you catch up to the. Oh, and Leo gets a free way of pace. Yeah, that was a better better move, wasn't it? There, I think um, uh, was that Gavillo moving out of the way. Yes, yep, it was. was. Um, Learned from his move on uh, Upsas. Here is Vanilla versus Vec. This is the battle for third place. We thought this would develop, and it has. Vanilla making a move on the back straight. Um, the Formula V, uh, sorry, the Formula Sixty is a fantastic looking car, isn't it? As they battle Let's side by side the contact. Here. Let's see the braking here now. Yeah, again, you can see the car really wiggles. They, they didn't give each other much room, but they've somehow managed to get through so far unscathed. Uh, clean move. Vanilla through up to P3. On yeah, back. that was a great move from Vanilla. Yeah. But he had to lift. He had to lift in the chicane. Oh, that would keep breaking. Oh. Oh, just as we go on board, there's some contact. Vec running into the rear wheel, and that's going to force Vanilla into a bit of a slide. These four are going to bunch up, I think, if these two keep fighting. Vec and Vanilla on similar pace. And in slower cars, you have to be significantly faster to not be a burden on the drivers around you, Zdravko. Yeah. Uh, I mean, here, here, Vec probably expected to get a bit more space. But Bonilla just didn't go for the racing line. He stayed on the inside, which is really interesting. Oh, these guys are taking no chances, are they, at all? I mean, this is uh, <laughs> super close stuff as they break down into the hairpin. This is all the meanwhile allowing uh, Lau and uh, Minisenai to close up. Uh, and they're still side by side. This is great. Yeah, and if these four cars close up and bunch up, I think the Drakes will be laughing because he pitted and he's basically in the fight oh. with his all. Oh my god. There's my noises close. again. That was, it wasn't just close, that was contact and yeah, not at a brake. place where you want it. Bunilla, Bunilla, Bunilla stepped on the brake. Yeah, and here comes uh, Yao again. Oh my god, this chicane is awesome when I'm, when I'm not driving and crashing into it there. <laughs> Watching other people do it is a lot a lot more fun than doing it, I think, as uh, these three have now bunched up. This is our podium battle, ladies and gents, as we head on to lap number 17, or rather lap number 16. I think uh, Upsas is the already round. No, he's not. Not quite. Uh, but yeah, these two. Uh, this is a great view for the LCT driver here. Watching these two scrap. And it, like you said, he'll have a big a big grin if this doesn't go well for these two. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're giving one to each other a bare minimum of living space oh that's that's less than the bare minimum that's contact and here comes uh, a three-way battle then for p3 guess it was my uh <laughs> my, uh, my turn to do a funny noise yep that was, those, i mean well held from Vec because <laughs> that was so close to being a disaster He could have just changed his name from Vec to Wally. If he, I was thinking, if yeah. He, yeah, that was just great, great catch. Side by side again through the turn that's gone wrong for so many before him, but uh, they make it work yet again. But this is bad for their race. They're, they're letting Leo and Upsass drive away nearly 10 seconds, but we are going to be entertained because there's now a four car battle for P3. And Liao is not wasting time. He's going to, no, he's not. He's not going for it. But uh, these three now all bunched up again. But he got a good exit now, Liao. So he will have Bunilla on the straight. And Wick has managed to run away a bit. Now we'll get the inside. 
I'm not sure, does he have enough overspeed to clear before turn one? Mm, well, he doesn't need to have overspeed, he just needs to hold the line because as they head through this next corner, this little kink, you're not going to lose too much ground, you just have to hold your Bonilla line. Bonilla had to break there. Oh. Bonilla break because otherwise he would just go wide into Leal. Yeah, this is great stuff. This Oh, we've got a car going wide, that's... Uh, who is that? That's Gavillo getting in the way and he needs to move out of the way and isn't. He's kind of just in this pack now, uh, just so chilling Bunilla out. Bunilla will middle. get massive draft now. Yeah. Oh, goodness me, you don't oh want this. God. You don't want this. The back marker just in the way there. Gavillo on the camera needs to move out of the way of this battle, but he's going for an outside move. What is he doing? Oh, he's slowing down in a place you don't really want to slow down. Is he? No, oh, he's gone for the send. This is not what you want from your back markers. Oh, and there's oh more contact. God. Oh, and he's put the car out of the race. That is a, that is terrible. That is absolutely not what you want from your back markers. And now these guys blocking the chicane. What was he doing? This is that was awful oh driving God. from Gavillo there. Absolutely awful. And Bonilla is still there on his road. Ah, he's, he must be gutted. He was trying to climb his way through and... Uh, well, unfortunately, everyone saw that for what it was. Uh, Gavillo just absolutely swarmed by uh, drivers. So, and, there's um, a band vault going on. Oh, my goodness server. me. Okay. Well, in my opinion, deserved. And it went Is that through. harsh? Probably not. It went it's deserved. I, yeah. Wow. I would say it's deserved. Yeah. It's a great race and... You can't be doing that. No, you the can't. People, yeah, right. There was a fight for podium. There was a fight for yeah. third position. And mm -hmm. uh, you can be a lap down and just go and interfere. Yeah, uh, well put. Um, but anyway, he's out of the race. And probably, well, he was out of the race anyway. He was on his roof, on his roll bar. Um, but we are now down to, unfortunately, a, uh, a spread out battle for third place. We have Vec, some, well, about a second and a half now ahead of this driver, uh, Liao who's been followed by uh, Minis Senai. Uh, can these guys close up? It looks like they will be able to. They were before. They just need to recompose themselves. Forget about what happened before. Try and close up. They don't have much in the way of any back markers for a while. They will soon, uh, but not too soon, as uh, Val goes into the barrier there on the exit of turn, uh, well, the penultimate corner. That is a real shame. Uh, we were getting, we were getting a, a, a nice... You know, setting ourselves up for a uh, a good long battle for P3 there. Yeah. It's, uh, unfortunately, denied. But uh, there we are. Yeah. So I was I was looking at Apsis and his tires, and I was thinking that maybe he will start getting problems, and then he goes and does a 123.37, a fastest lap of the race. So. I guess Absis likes cold tires. While we were looking at Upsas, Hernan was lining up the back of uh, Talibasi, and he's doing it again because Talibasi got a massive slide out of the penultimate corner as they head up to the home straight now. And Hernan is in a place you don't really want to be as you enter the home straight. He would have much preferred to have done this move later on because, as you can see, Talibasi coming straight back through. I wonder if Hernan will just lift and give it to him and uh, save them both time. Yes, it looks like he has done, in fact, as he slots in behind and will try and make that move elsewhere. Talibasi just holding them both up with that slide. And I've just noticed that Talibasi is using the player hacker and has no helmet on. Well, he just likes the wind. I would say <laughs> in his hair, but there's no hair on that head, so... There he is. Wind on his forehead. Yeah, he can't yeah. see where he's going anymore, so now... Hernan goes to the inside. <laughs> I, I think that the outside is the preferred way in this turn, but Hernan has an overlap. Yeah, and he leads the car to the outside to take the racing line. That's a nice move. That was a great move around the outside. Shouldn't that done plenty of times? Yeah. The driver's getting better at it, certainly, as the race goes on. Um, don't go for a return move here. Oh, contact oh in the wall, and both I mean, of them I mean, spinning. Hernan, Hernan hit the wall on his own. Yeah. And Mr. Wally just overtakes them both. Yep, straight through, you know. <laughs> no prisoners, there's, you know, there's no point waiting, just go for the move, and those two have to pick up the pieces later on. Uh, Upsas 
he 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 can't relax here because Leo is not going away. Yes, there's still a 1.7 second gap, but that has stayed for about the last 10 to 15 laps at that exact distance. Yeah, and their split time is exactly the same this lap. Yeah, so even though Sass is putting in the fastest laps, it's uh, it's not enough to keep Leo away from him necessarily. As uh, the top, the, the battle for the third place position, I'm pleased to say, is grouping back up again after the drama we saw a few laps ago. And the closer they get, the more funny faces Rakes start starts to make. He made already a second on this group after yeah. the speed stop. Uh, Chris and Arias just said that um, everyone except the top six have pitted. So Rags is the first car, I believe, yep. who has done a pit stop. Um, so these guys, uh, these guys have obviously been uh, held up a little bit in the in the fight with the the back marker that they shouldn't have had, and uh, now have to make up that time without holding each other up again. Otherwise, Rags will, as you said, have the biggest smile on the grid. Yeah, Rags is currently twenty six seconds behind Vec. And his last lap was half a second faster than back. I mean, Neon is also in a good position. He's only two and a half seconds, two, two seconds behind Rakes. So if anything happens in this fight for third position, he can also profit. As you see, Beck is having big problems with having the call. Minister now tried to pull out but decided against it. It looked like he would try to outbreak Leo in the last turn. And I'm sorry, I'm calling the penultimate turn the last turn just because. Uh, yeah, it's not this really turn much of like an event. Full yeah. throttle. <laughs> it's fair enough. And they merge into one when we do this. We've got a side by side battle across the start finish. Hernan's going for a move further back, but we're going to stick with this as they head on to lap 23. Uh, the battle for the podium. Well, this is currently the battle for one step off the podium, but uh, <laughs> either of these two need to, uh, you know, find some pace and catch up to Vec, who isn't really getting away, even though these two are fighting. Oh, Minisenau. Minisenau got so good exit that it's probably hurting him more than if he had a bad exit and then got a draft and had an uh, overspeed on the straight. I do like those camera views looking at the internals of this mod. It's very well, very well made. It's a very attractive looking car as they go side by side again into the chicane. That is giving Vec a little bit of a breathing room now. Uh, these two now definitely holding each other up and with only seven laps to go after this one, they can't afford too much more of this if they want that podium for themselves. Maybe, Maybe. they need to work together. It really does look like with this car, the outside is preferred Yeah. in that turn after the back straight. Interesting characteristic of the car. Not true for many others in the for speed currently. Yeah, Leo will have to draft now on the straight. Yeah, because of the, how slow this car is and, and the, the, the lack of ultimate grip, uh, you know, carrying speed through corners like that is, is, is what you need. Much like the karting line. Let's see how how good they behave there. Oh, that's close. This that's is great stuff. Awesome shot. And you really got to see how the front tire deflected yeah. under the load. Yeah, the for speed They're time model running. is fantastic, yeah. even on these mods. I mean, I, I might be biased because I love it for speed, but to me, the tire speed. behavior is better than. AC or I racing. Yeah, uh, yeah, hundred percent would agree with you. And this this mods this mods with people running the wheels like this car have really really puts all the grip power in the tires and you can really see how good it works. Our eagle eyed viewers in the chat are commenting on the fact that Leo is now only over, just over a second behind Upsas, uh, which is fair point as we have uh uh Liao deciding that that was enough and he's gone into the pit lane because of course these top guys not many of them have made stops yet so he's the first to blink uh when will upsas come in I'm, I'm pretty sure this is the this is this gap is coming down this is this battle is not over uh but yeah, these Leo guys have still got their pit stops 
Leo just posted a new fastest lap of the race. Yeah, so he got two tenths on upsets. That is an, an that is an enormous, enormous um, difference. So that must have been a lap from the gods to post the twenty three. Uh, what would it have been? A one seven. Ah, twenty three thirty four. So two yeah. hundreds. Um, point two faster than upsets his previous lap. Not faster than his fastest lap. That would have been a lap from the gods as they head into the chicane for the twenty fifth time of asking. Will one of these two go into the pit lane? Or will they go for track position? Leo with a very, very nice chicane there. And look at the timing tower. 0.99 seconds the gap. So, they both have to do a pit stop. Mm -hmm. a massive and variable in a race like this. Yeah, you definitely can lose half a second in a pit stop. Or gain. So, maybe the lower pressure for Leo is starting to work in his favor now. Regs the... must have lost a bit of time because the owls managed to come out of the pit lane ahead of him uh, by about 10 seconds, uh, I think. So Regs may have made an error or has just been dropping back slowly. And Minister um, now is going into pits now. So let's see where he gets out. Probably it around not... the same place, I guess. It didn't look to me like a good pit entry. He went into Quick first stop. gear, then realized that the first gear is not going to... 80 yeah, yeah the owl's so... gonna be straight through it's a it's a it's gonna be a big advantage is it not he's just getting up yeah. to speed now I and there he goes through yes minister now went first second first second gear and every time he put it into first gear he dropped 10 kph so that was a bit weird i saw rakes did the same look at this 0.88 it's going down a tenth and a bit every single lap and that is enough to get in the slipstream and these two have yet to do a pit stop better entry for leo better apex better exit as well uh this is not over upsass is going to be starting to sweat so Vinso got out of pits just behind the rakes and this was very close into turn one let's see how they go from the inner inner stage of the track if Vinso manages to be close he might be having a run on the back straight, on the start finish straight as Leo goes for another fastest lap of the race. Setting personal bests in the race uh, in the last four laps while you're battling for the lead is probably the best time to do a personal best. Um, slipstream territory, where is it in this car? Is it around half a second or is it is he going well, to be feeling it now? Slipstream territory, I would say it's around 16 meters. And okay. uh, for your information, Leo is 24 behind Absess, but he was only 19 on the corner exit, so I would say 0 0.3. Well, he's closing up so much on the on the the minuscule braking zones that he's having to negotiate here. He's he's taking tiny amounts out, and it's going to be just enough for a grandstand finish, I believe, if he can keep this up. Come on, Leo, yeah. we want to see a fight. This is going to be if great. If we go into meter stock again, he's 10 meters behind Absess and in a draft zone. I think these, these numbers are too accurate. You're taking the fun out of it, Zajavko. You need to chill yeah. out. Um, <laughs> as we head on to the home straight for the 27th time of asking, these two yet to stop. And uh, there are some battles going on elsewhere. It looks like Vinzu is starting to uh, reel in regs again as well. Although that gap looks like it may have opened up slightly again. Uh, ebbing and flowing, as we like to call it. Yeah, Leo will probably try to attack this lap, and I was wrong, because 14 meters was not enough for a draft, so he has to really be like 0 0.2 behind. He is pushing a lot, um, he's slightly faster on the straight, that could be to do with the higher pressures, maybe Leo has lower pressures or different gearing, um, but yeah, this is super, super close, awesome stuff to see. Um, yeah, let's see what this, what this, uh, how this develops. We only have three laps to go, two and a half, as we head over the sector line. Let's get a gap. Uh, Will they go two. together in the pits? Possibly. I mean, what would you do in this situation? Would you go in? Would you do the opposite? Would you leave it as late as possible? Because what Leo doesn't want to do is have to. Um, well, he doesn't want to have to fumble around I mean, with him in the pit lane. Yeah, I mean, uh, if 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 you if if you want to be if you want to be a bit evil in Leo's case, you could just follow up, do what he does, 
and then stop one box ahead of him and make him lose time. And on point. top of this, they are catching up blue flag car. So that's Tem Talibasi. Yeah, um, Upsas has done a good job in this last sector. He's definitely opened up the gap slightly, but neither of them coming in the pit lane. So they have to do it on this lap. Uh, that is it. They have no other opportunities. They will pit at the end of this lap, both of them. And we will see what happens. That is that is all that's all that's left to say. The die has been cast. Uh, I mean, I mean, Absis did a bit faster lap than Leo, but Leo still paused at twenty three six. So that's still like faster than anyone else on the track except Absis. Battle for P3 is close again, but uh, you'll notice that there's only two cars in it because uh, Minasanal, he, he uh, fumbled his pit stop somewhat. He couldn't pick a gear and couldn't get out of the pit lane smoothly at all. Couldn't pull away from his box, couldn't get in Ooh, and either. Oh, and catches Oh, Televesi was really nice to do that. He moved clear out of the way. Do we have so a slipstream opportunity for P3? Looks like we do. As our both leader spits, I will keep you updated on that. Yeah, two battles going on at once is always tricky as these two go side by side into the chicane. Oh my goodness me. Uh, super close. These two are going to be battling side by side. Uh, to the end, I think. But that, while well, that happens, let's see what Upsas and Leo do. Upsas has gone a lot later in the pit lane. Uh, they're staying away from but each I other. Think, I wise. think Leo went oh. a bit over the box. He's messed it up, yeah. He, he's yeah. lost so much time. That's it. What isn't it is uh, these two. Have these two pitted? Have they been in? Yes, I think they've been in. Everyone's been in. Uh, panicked slightly there as they drove past the pit lane. Uh, but these two side by side. This is our battle for the podium. Um, one mistake from either of these two will hand P3 to Minisenau oh, behind, the yellow car don't behind. Don't drive so close, guys. Yeah, this is super close. Um, Zdravko, what's the battle for the lead doing? I don't want to miss any of the action, but... Uh... It's over. Okay, want... we will stay yeah. with this. Absis is 1.5 seconds ahead of Leo. Oh, contact! And Minisenau is going to be grinning. He's made up one place there. That was uh, Vex spinning round, and that's that. That's why you don't go that close into the first corner. On the final lap, Minisenau could have this. It's, and it's still close. Minisenau did an absolute oh. fast last lap, 123.71. So that's faster than Leo did anywhere in the race. Yeah, out of the final corner comes Born to Race Upsas. He's had everything this race. Uh, he's had to deal with everything. He's had to deal with uh, Leo closing in on him. But in the end, the variables can go either way. And Leo was the one who slightly messed up his pit stop and hands the win of round one of the 2022 Kesav Mods Cup to Born to Race Upsas. What a race. And uh, we will switch back to this battle for third and uh, see just how it develops. But it does look yeah. like Leo will take it. Yeah, Minisenau was all over him and then clipped the wall on the exit of Chicane. So yeah, is that another that fastest lap for Leo on the final lap as well? Well, it wouldn't have been on the final lap because of his uh, his messed pit stop, but he did set a very, very nice time. Uh, Minisenau comes across the line P4, uh, P4 just behind Liao in the end. Leo P2, uh, Vec P5, uh, Rags there P6 in the end, uh, Vinzu P7, and we see Neon uh, in P8. Waiting for a few other cars to uh, come through our pictures and here they come across the line the last few cars Quintella there as well as uh, Wally and Leandro a couple more cars gonna come across the line Basi going through and that is everyone I believe is it no, we got Maxis still. Ah, Maxis and too, yes. Yeah. That's done now. There we are. That wraps up a, a very, very, very interesting and very fun round to watch. Yeah, a bit a bit sad that Laguskas crashed out. Could have been even better fight for the win. 
Well, I mean, I, I wasn't expecting quite this much excitement this late in the evening, but we got it. And we got it with the Formula 60 at South City chicane route. And congratulations to Upsass uh, winning in a, in a, a fantastic uh, way there. Um, well, it's a little bit of a shame to see, as you said, Lugutskas drop out, but Leo gave him a really nice fight, 1.7 seconds, and that's a 20-second gap back to P3. So those two driving in another league. Uh, well, actually, they're driving in Division 1. There was a whole other race happening at the same time that we didn't get to watch in Division 2. Um, there we are. Liao, P3. Minis Senau in P4, just off the podium. Vec, P5. Rags, P6. Vinzu for Team America, P7. Neon for LCR in P8. Then we've got Argentina Turismo, CHV, P9. And Team America's Wally in P10. Quintella for LCT, P11. Hernan for Furtive Junior, P12. Talibasi, Maxi, Leandro, A. Vanilla, uh, Gavillo, uh, was the first of our non-finishers, I believe. Oh, no, sorry. Uh, yes, Vanilla, first of our non-finishers in that incident with Gavillo in the middle of the race at the Chicane. Unfortunate one, that. Then we've got Yes Motorsports, the Gutskas, uh, Pablo and Mitsu, also non-finishers. So five non-finishers in this one. Um, but what a race. Yeah, and uh, oh, what a car for racing. It, uh, yes, it's absolutely. a good combination. So uh, congratulations for CSF to realizing what a good combo this track and car will make yeah absolutely um and let's get one more look at it because i think it, it really deserves the credit if you don't or if you haven't already tried the uh, formula 60 mod by faku 23 and you enjoyed what you watched tonight uh then please go ahead and try it out in lfs s3 that's all you need to try this car download it from the mods viewer on the in, inside the game or from the website at lfs.net uh, yeah, it's provided quite a lot of entertainment. We don't have a podium photograph. We don't know what the drivers do after Kassav. Normally, we see them drive around to the start-finish line, but they've uh, they've gone their separate ways. They've driven off. Um, Upsas is somewhere down by turn one. There he is. Um, let's have a look, Zdravko, at the calendar for the uh, for this season because we're just down to do uh, race number one of uh, Kassav, which um, right now seems like a bit of a shame because this looks like quite a nice little series. So maybe we'll have a chat off air about that. Uh, South City Chicane route is done. Round one completed. The second round of the Kassav 2022 Mods Cup will be at Rockingham ISSC Long in four weeks' time on March 28th. And that will be in a new time zone. Of course, the clocks are shifting. Kyoto Ring North will be the uh, the um, the uh, the uh, stadium for round number three. Then we've got Rockingham Historic in round four. And Blackwood GP will be the stage for round number five on June 20th. Uh, Zdravko, this is a nice little series they've got here, and we wish them all the success with it. And the next the next race will be done with Shark Sika. Yeah, which uh, we've seen we, in Roni's Tuesday. We have seen that in Rockingham. Already. Yeah, we have indeed. And it so, was great fun. So don't nice. miss it. Don't miss it. Uh, it will be an awesome race. Yeah, good words from uh, Zdravko. Do not miss that one. That'll be happening in four weeks' time. I think that's all we've got time for, and we, we, can, we can wrap up here. And say our good nights from all of us to all of you. This has been the first round, the opening round of the 2022 season of the Kassav Mods Cup in Live for Speed S3. Uh, we hope you enjoyed it. We certainly did. And we're going to go and get some sleep now. But uh, from all of us, have a good one. We'll see you next time.